the debt warriors listening and welcome back to another episode of millennial debt domination i'm your host katie fatta and in today's episode i'll be discussing the importance of financial anxiety and stress for those of you who might not know may is mental health awareness month and financial stress plays a huge part in mental health people are always thinking about their finances and if they're not in an ideal financial position they can be experiencing stress and anxiety related to it. My guest today is a returning guest of Millennial Debt Domination, Kim Cole, who is Navicore Solutions Community Engagement Manager. Kim hosts lectures where she educates people about financial stress, so I thought she would be the right guest to help educate our listeners on this topic. Kim and I will also be discussing ways to cope with your financial stress and how you can get help. Now, here's Kim. Hi, Kim. Thanks for being here today. Hey, Katie. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. So um, as you know, May highlights mental health awareness. And a lot of the time, finances can be a str- uh, can be like a, a strain on a person's financial health. Do you think you could describe financial stress and how someone would know if they are experiencing it? Oh, absolutely. I have to tell you, first and foremost, this is something that is very important to me yeah. because uh, both mental health and financial issues, a lot of people don't realize that there can be a direct correlation between the two. Uh, when we look at what the Financial Health Institute defines as financial stress, it, it is a condition that is the result of financial and or economic events that create anxiety, worry, or sense of scarcity. And it's accompanied by a physiological stress response. So we know that when it comes to financial stress, it's not just, oh, I can't pay my bills. We're actually seeing symptoms such as uh, as extreme as heart attacks, but also insomnia, gastrointestinal issues, substance abuse, uh, increased blood pressure. I mean, these are legitimate Uh physical responses that someone would have to extreme stress. Yeah, definitely. That's crazy. Some people don't even think about that. That's, that's like a lot, you know, really is. Uh, So that's, that's good that people are that you're educating them. So they know if they're experiencing that it could be because of the this, you know, financial stress. So what are some of the top reasons a person or a family experiences financial stress? Well, one of the things that we know right off the bat is one of the main causes of divorce is financial stress and financial issues. So we can talk about right right away if a family is going through a divorce, if we've seen a reduction of income. Um, one of the things that people don't think about is poor money management. And of course, this goes back to understanding financial education and financial literacy. Um, We saw in the recession, there were many people that were unemployed. But one of the things that we didn't factor in were the amount of people that took jobs that left them underemployed. So an underemployment could definitely be a financial stress. The number one cause for bankruptcy is medical expenses. So if you have a family member that has extraordinary medical expenses, that's going to create an incredible financial stress. And of course, what we see on kind of a a lower end is just that lack of savings. Um, Perhaps there's some gambling involved. Um, We also see spouses and significant others having very poor financial communication skills. One doesn't know what the other is doing. We actually have a term for that now, Katie. It's called financial infidelity. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And, you know, these these uh, reasons, they definitely keep people up at night and not being able to sleep and stuff that definitely can affect someone's mental health. So how can the financial stress affect someone's mental health in other ways? Well, you know, I think that you kind of hit the nail on the head right there. Yeah. 
One of the things that we see in the credit counseling um, industry, housing industry, as well as financial education, is the likelihood to avoid. Uh, I can tell you just from my own personal experience as a credit counselor, having people come into our office with a box full of unopened mail, that kind of burying your head in the sand um, is, is a real issue. Um, people may feel like their life is out of control. One of the things that we see, too, is getting that kind of um, desperation for a temporary relief. That could be anything from drugs to alcohol to shopping. And you know, this is where we start to see addictions kind of come into play. But we also know that somebody that is experiencing that level of financial stress, we see their self-esteem plummet, which can affect them in so many ways. Of course, things like energy levels decreasing. Uh, We see weight gain, weight loss. We see all of these things. But realistically, what is really concerning is that at the bottom of this, and it picks it fall into, is that lack of control which in the end leads to all the other symptoms that I described. Right. Do you think that that lack of control um, could be a reason how people accumulate this much debt? Like how do people accumulate that much debt that they're in financial stress? And is it different for everyone? Like some person might be only a thousand dollars in the hole, but they they're stressed from that. So how does someone accumulate that debt and does it affect people in different ways? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, You know, when you say that, you know, somebody who may have a thousand dollars in debt, it's all relative. Yeah. It's different for every person, I guess. Right. Oh, without question. uh, You know, kind of their breaking point is um, different for every person at every different level of income and different level of debt. Um, But, you know, what we see are the traditional factors. We see people that, Medical bills, we just see generalized overspending. Right. We see, again, spending out of desperation. That would be the people who are charging their groceries and charging their utility bills because they don't have the income to meet their regular monthly obligations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that's the problem is people will just keep charging it. And everyone's debt is different, so... They could be stressed about just credit card debt, or they could have had a major car accident and then been in all that debt. So it is different for everyone. Oh, you're so right. I mean, we saw in 2008, 2009, where people had all different kinds of mortgages. And it it helped create the uh, birth of the housing market bubble. So it doesn't necessarily have to be credit cards. That's definitely a misconception. It could be so many other factors. Right, definitely. But, you know, it, it's, it means you're going kind of through like a financially difficult time. So what is financial, financial difficulty? And how does someone know if they're going through a financially difficult time? Like, what's that point where they might realize like, oh, this, I, I'm going through it financially? Well, you know, it's funny because one of the things that I say all the time is that if you have nothing in your savings account at the end of the month, you are hitting that financial difficult time. Um, We have all seen the studies, those of us that are interested in financial education, that says that the average American does not have $400 to cover an emergency. So um, when we look at the excessive cost of Um, medical care, and we look at student loans, and we look at car prices, and all those crazy things, we know firsthand that it's hard to make it each month. But if you are barely creeping by, and you're using credit to get you through to the end of the month, Mm -hmm. that is a really good way of determining if there's a problem. A lot of people don't think it's a problem because they're still making it. Their mortgage or rent is paid, their utilities are paid. You know, nothing's being shut off, but what they are not seeing is the back end where there's an incredibly high accumulation of debt um, that's eventually going to get to them. 
Right. And, uh, you know, like a lot of these credit cards and stuff, they have such a high limit and if people might only put it, be putting, you know, half on, but let's say your limit's over $10,000 and you still have $5,000 on your credit card. They might not think that's a big deal, but you still have to pay that back. Absolutely. And, you know, um, we saw with some of the credit card reform that uh, they, the credit card companies were asking for a little bit more of the minimum payment. But when you're looking at 2.5 to 3 percent of the balance as the payment, it really doesn't hit home on, for a lot of people until that minimum payment gets to be out of reach. Right. Not to mention, you got to consider compound interest. That yeah. debt is growing Every day without you touching a thing. Right. And uh, for a lot of people, it gets out of control that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, when they have all this debt, it, it can be super stressful. Um, and they might not know how to kind of cope with this kind of financial stress because some people don't even think of that as a real mental health problem and a real stress. So um, how can somebody kind of cope with this mental health, with this financial stress? So, you know, ironically, dealing with the financial stress as a whole is very much like dealing with uh, traditional stressors that would be from work or anything else. First and foremost, we have to get to a place where we are relaxed and able to look at the entire picture. That is critical. And the way I recommend doing that is by kind of clearing out the clutter we need to actually organize everything. Finally, take a look. See, who do we owe? How much do we owe? What's going on? And getting rid of what we don't need and only focusing on the necessities and um, where we need to start. And um, I highly recommend utilizing a professional to assist in that. Uh, credit counselors are amazing in helping people figure out what the priorities should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was going to ask, um, how does a person begin to conquer their financial stress? Do you recommend a credit counselor first or starting with something else first and then going to a credit counselor? What would you recommend? Well, I think there's a kind of two avenues and it, it depends on the individual. I myself am a big fan of utilizing a credit counselor because it gives somebody the opportunity to have a third party take a look at their situation in a non-judgmental way mm -hmm. and kind of help them organize everything without giving them the sense of being completely and utterly overwhelmed. Right. However, there are people that would prefer to do it on their own and that's fine too. And in those cases, what you really do need to do first and foremost is take a look at how much it costs to be you. And that is by starting with tracking expenses and creating a financial spending plan and seeing exactly uh, who you owe, how much you owe and where your money's going each month. Yeah, definitely. And then what are some debt repayment options that people who are coping with financial stress can take advantage of? So, you know, first, first and foremost, there is the traditional repay the debt on your own, mm -hmm. where you may reach out to the credit card companies. They may or may not offer you some kind of break on the interest. Um, and I will tell you, I mean, over the years, we've seen it go both ways. We've seen it in times where credit card companies were more than willing to do that. And we've seen times where they were not so willing to do that. So, um, you know, that, that's definitely an option. Um, I myself am a fan of debt management plans, particularly for those people that are really struggling making those payments and they're starting to fall behind. And that's where you would utilize a nonprofit credit counseling agency to help you uh, kind of set up the debt with reduced interest, uh, hopefully some reduced payments, stopping late and over limit fees, but the other thing I love about debt management plans is that really good credit counseling agencies bring financial education into that area. So not only are you getting the debt under control, but you're also learning how to manage that debt and future debt, which is really critical. Uh, we're, right, seeing, right. we're seeing a lot in the debt settlement uh, industry. 
Um, that I always recommend with a buyer beware. Um, we always want to be careful when we're settling debt. There can be tax ramifications, and you want to make sure that you read the fine print of every contract. Um, and if you're utilizing an agency to help you with that, just make sure that they really are legitimate. Check them out and make sure what you're doing is the right move. Right. And um, definitely a debt management plan could be a great option for someone because in the, it says management in the title. Like you can manage the payments. You know, it's specifically tailored for you. That's correct. And um, you know, that that's really important. And one of the things that a lot of people say is, oh, you know, um, I, you know, I want to keep using credit. I want to keep being able to use the cards and keep spending. You're never going to get out of debt if you continue using your credit cards. Uh, a debt management plan really, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to get yourself debt free and to do so without causing an extreme hardship. You know, we've seen a lot of a lot of ads and, and a lot of different stories recently about families who basically sold their house, moved into um, like a you know, small cabin and paid off all of their debt. And the question becomes, at what cost? Right. So, you know, with the debt management plan, it fits within your lifestyle. It makes life easier. And in my opinion, it also helps get people to the point where they're able to work on other areas. For instance, if they know one payment and that payment's going directly to their creditors, they can spend more time focused on getting up their spending plan and figuring out where the holes are and, you know, making sure there's emergency savings. It's just really, I think, the best way of handling that right now. Yeah. And, it's, it, you know, the, the debt management plan, it takes time. Like, it's not going to happen overnight. So you just have to kind of be patient with it. And like, it it takes time to completely have no financial stress too. So while you're kind of going through the financial stress or you're going through like a debt management plan, how can you relieve financial stress during those times? Well, you know, I mean, first and foremost, like I said, I mean, just having a better understanding of what's going on with your money in the first place is going to help. But there are some really great tips for stress relief. Um, You know, I mean, uh, there's deep breathing, there's meditation, there's listening to music and, you know, there's yoga. But, you know, one of the things that I really do like to go back to is talking to someone. When you have the opportunity to talk to a financial counselor, one of the things it gives you the opportunity to do is talk to them about what has happened, and what your goals are moving forward. And that in its own right is going to relieve a tremendous amount of stress. Okay, yeah, it's always good to talk to someone about your, you know, when you're going through someone, I think talking to someone is one of the best uh, stress relievers for any situation. I agree completely. Yeah, so what are some some common misconceptions about financial stress? You know, I think that, you know, people are under the impression that the more money you have, the less financial stress you have, which I think is absolutely not true. Yeah. Um, You know, I mean, as we have learned over the years, credit gives us the ability to live a lifestyle that we may not necessarily be able to afford. So just because there's a flashy car and a nice big house does not mean that there is not extraordinary uh, amount of um, financial stress. And I think the other, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, I was going to say, the more money you have, the harder it could even be to manage. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, I also think that there's a misconception that as adults, we're managing our financial stress and that our children have no financial stress. Mm -hmm. You know, financial stress has manifested itself in such a way that it impacts every area of our life. And trust me, the family sees it. It impacts people at work. Um, We've gotten calls 
from employers who want us to come out and speak to their employees because their financial stress is so high. It's actually impacting their daily work. It's impacting marriages, children. I mean, it, it really does have a huge impact. And I think the misconception is, is that, oh, you know, that's a poor person. They don't have, you know, they have stress, whatever, that that's their lifestyle, but it doesn't work like that. Everybody's got some kind of financial stress. Right. And, you know, you would think money makes the world go round, but the more you have, the sometimes the harder it is because you're like, you got so you can't you sometimes you can't control it. Very, very true. And we, we see that quite a bit. Uh, you know, people assume that when um, we deal with our clients in the credit counseling area, that the people that we're dealing with are low income. And they're surprised to hear when we say that we talk to highly educated, high income professionals on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some misconceptions about, you know, credit counseling, too, that some people might not understand. You know, so, um, so what resources can someone use for financial stress assistance? So what I recommend first and foremost, is if you feel like things are out of control, contact a nonprofit credit counseling agency. I can't recommend that enough. Right. Um, we uh, here at Navicor Solutions offer that program where if you're looking for someone in your area, the NFCC is always a wonderful resource. Um, if they're experiencing um, possible foreclosure or difficulty with paying their mortgage, there's some wonderful housing counseling agencies. They don't charge a dime for counseling. They'll work between you and your mortgage company and try to work something out. So I also recommend HUD uh, housing counseling agencies. If you're being harassed by predators, which unfortunately can cause extreme stress, um, you can always file complaints with the Federal Trade Commission. Then lastly, the unknown tends to be a big source of anxiety. Take a look at your credit reports. Annualcreditreport.com is a wonderful place to get all three of your reports from Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion free of charge once per year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like the credit score sometimes is something that people might be scared to look at, like their bank accounts to see how much money they have. But it's it's good to know it's that you're not alone. There are so many people that are experiencing financial stress. They probably just don't talk about it because it's not something you would want to talk about. Well, it's, it's actually funny you say that, Katie, um, because there was actually a study done a few years ago that kind of surprised those of us in the financial education industry. And studies showed that people were more comfortable discussing their sex life than they were talking about their personal finances. I totally believe that. <laughs> yes. So, I, I found that a bit shocking. Um, however, I mean, that, that's where we've come, we've come to a place where even what we think of as some of the most taboo topics are more comfortable to discuss than our own financial positions. Yeah, I think because sometimes people are embarrassed if they don't have as much money yeah. as their friends or something, they'll feel it. And they might even feel embarrassed using credit counseling because they're like, yeah, I don't want anyone to know that. But you have to think about it in the long run. This is going to help you. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it's a lot it's a lot like going to see your doctor. You know, we all have that moment of, oh, my goodness, I have to tell my doctor something. But we all know the doctor has heard it a million times. The same with credit counseling. You, when you speak to a certified credit counselor, there is nothing that you're going to say or do that is going to cause judgment, going to cause shock or laughter. Um, I, you know, I, th I think of us at Navicor and the amount of years when you look at our counselors that we have under our belts of doing this. And I have to say, chances are your story is not any different than most people's situation right now. It just feels that way. Yeah, I was going to say, it's nothing that they haven't already heard, probably. Exactly. Yeah. 
So do you have anything else you'd like to share about financial stress and how it relates to mental health or anything else you'd like to share with the listeners? <laughs> Actually, there is. I mean, one of the things that when we talk about mental health and we talk about finances, that's one area that we tend to overlook a little bit, and that is different mental illnesses that can show themselves in excessive spending. So um, if you do have someone that is showing strange behaviors with major amounts of spending, maybe out of character for them, that's an indicator that there is a potential um, mental illness at play there. Um, we, we at Navicorp had the privilege of working at uh, several facilities where there are people that suffer from different uh, mental health ailments. And one of the common threads was that whether it was anxiety, whether it was depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, a lot of it all manifested itself at the end of the day with excessive spending. So just because somebody is spending a lot, it doesn't mean they're being frivolous, that through personal finance, we can also look a little bit deeper and possibly find an underlying mental health condition. Mm -hmm. That's a good point to bring up. Yeah, definitely. And I'll obviously put all the information for Navicor and everything in our podcast description. So if you are feeling financial stress and you can't handle it and you think you do need credit counseling help, obviously you could feel free to reach out to us. Um, well, Kim, thank you for being here today and giving some insight on uh, financial stress and how it's important and how your financial health is just as important as everything else. So thank you again for being a guest today. Oh, thank you, Katie. Yeah. I love I love being a guest. I have so much fun. I was going to say, this is the second time already. We'll, we'll have to have you back again oh, in the future. Do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Your mental health is so important and a lot of people put their mental health on the back burner because of other things that are going on in their busy lives. Always remember that at the end of the day, you come first. You can't help the people around you unless you first help yourself. Financial stress is more common than most people think. Like Kim and I said, finances aren't usually the topic of discussion between friends and family. People are uncomfortable talking about their finances and this can cause them stress. You know, at the end of the day, more people have financial problems than you probably realize and you're definitely not alone. As always, you can reach out to a credit counselor at Navicor Solutions if you feel as if your debt is uncontrollable and you need real help. Make yourself a priority and be aware of your mental health. That wraps up another episode of Millennial Debt Domination. Please subscribe or follow Millennial Debt Domination wherever you get your podcasts and make sure to rate and review us on iTunes. We love hearing your feedback, so check the podcast description for our social media handles. See you next time, Millennials, Gen Zers, and everyone else listening.